Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. Thanks for joining. Today we're gonna to be doing an off the mat assembly and it is Mike from Monsters Inc, as you can see. So he is a little bit smaller than what we normally do. He sat 16 and a half inches and that's because he's part of a series. So there's Boo in here and there's also Sully. And so with them, um, ranging in size he's right in the middle at 16 and a half inches so but this is still a really really good lesson because it still has all the things all the components that we have with an off the mat assembly so the first thing that we're going to do is his face with all off the mat characters what i like to do is i like to make a copy of the face because there can always be a seam usually there's a seam running through and a lot of times with the face um, most of the black is covered, right? Because you have your eyes, you have your lips, teeth, um, but there's always going to be some opening. And with all eyes being focused on the face, I like to make a copy of the face. So in this case, here it is. And then with that copy of the face, you go to contour and you just black everything out. You want it to be a solid thing because this is going to go in between the actual black background and so it's going to sit on sit in between the top layer and the the black background with all the seams that we're putting back together and so that way it's going to cover up all the seams it's really important because our eyes are always directed towards the face and so you're going to see the seams coming through and so when you do this the, then it looks seamless. Then all our seams really, what's left is going to be all the way at the edges, little tiny pieces that maybe add up to an inch total. But what you're not going to see is those, you're not going to concentrate on those areas because you're going to have beautiful little colors, you know, shimmer and sparkle and it, the characters are always so cute. All right, so let's get started. So um, let's tape down these pieces. So I do like to use my double-sided tape. This is Tombow. And so I always have scratch paper on the side. I don't save scratch paper or scrap paper for regular cardstock because it's too much. Um, <laughs> I would need a whole storage area for that. But what I do is I save the big pieces so that we could just use this and tape things down. So. Um, I have a couple different things that I use for double-sided tape. I have the 3M strips, which in this case, because it's big enough, I would use. Um, I like the Tombow, and then I also like the glue dots. I know, I'm. it's just the pieces range in size, and so I feel like whatever works for you, um, that's what you want to do. So we're putting down the face. This one is a little bit smaller than usual, so it's going to be a little bit easier to piece together. It usually... Um, the black background is more than four pieces. In this case, he is just, he's a tiny guy. So it, it will be fast and fun. And I'm gonna still show you a lot of tricks. Now, when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that your tape does not go past your, your, um, your item. Because it, against the black background, you're going to see the, the tape. I mean, the tape is supposed to be clear, but you can definitely see it. So you want to make sure you don't go past the black. And in this case, even here a little bit. So I always have one of these tools from Cricut and just push everything back and then you're good. All right. So we're going to just lay this down. We already liked how everything looked. So... And then this one's so thin, I'm gonna take my Tombow. And again, you just wanna kind of rub down your double-sided tape so that it's not showing on this side, and that way you're not gonna see it coming through. And the thing with the double-sided tape is, if you notice right now, I put it down, but until you really like smother it down, there's still room for movement. So you wanna just lay it down gently, wiggle it around, and then press down. Okay, so here we go. Okay, 
this one's a little bit easier. Um, so I do a lot of these, as you know, and I do have, I, for a new character, if I'm really unfamiliar with it, I always do a sample before I start selling it. So when I do that, I, you know, keep them up back here. And so the double-sided tape has been great for me. It's lasted, some of my characters are well over a year. I take them to Michael's with me when I was doing the Michael's classes. Um, I've let my daughter's friends touch them, take pictures, because I'm always kind of testing out what's working, what's not working. So you just want to make sure the only time that I have issues is when I don't put enough tape down. But these have lasted through all of those all of those events. So you're good with this. Um, so you just wanna, you need to make sure you push it back. Otherwise, it's much harder to clean it once it's down on the paper. And you see it's touching, the edges are touching, but until I press down, um, you're still, like I said, really good with this. Okay, so this is down. My black background in the back, it tore a little bit when I cut it because I did not push it down on the mat very well, and so it ripped. And so I had to trim off the edges, so it's not a perfect cut, which is why I did it this way. Because what I wanna do is I kinda wanna lift this up and tape down. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take one of these. And I'm gonna do one area at a time because it's not a perfect fit, which is why I did it backwards. I put everything down so that I know exactly where it needs to go. Okay. All right, so that's down. Now I feel a little bit more comfortable about lifting this up. And so now we can really put a lot of tape down. So these 3M tapes, um, I love it because they're just huge strip. It's a big roll like this. And so I end up just cutting it off. All right. I'm going to do just one more piece over here. And then what I'm going to do is what you'll find is when you put it onto the foam board, you'll see like which areas still need more tape and you can easily go back in at that point and use your little, um, your little squares or your circle ones. And you can just squeeze it in and know exactly. Like I know we're gonna need a piece right here. Cause you want everything, I mean, we don't totally need it cause you can see it's pretty stiff, right? But um, I know it's gonna bother me. So give me just one second. I have these little squares or circles. <laughs> So Dollar Tree, I hopefully you guys have one near you. They have totally stepped up their glue game and tape game. Um, they have a lot of foam tape and these little circles. So I'm definitely testing them out. They feel really, really sticky though. All right, so this is done. Let's move these out and we're gonna do our black background right now. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. Okay, here is our our four little pieces and as you can see I had some issues last night cutting but I think it's in the background we're not going to notice the little cuts but I will show you myself all right so here are our pieces you want to piece it together and this is why I like to do the grid of squares in design space because I love how the pieces just, they're equal. And you know exactly where they go. They butt up, they form four squares, go right here into the corner right there. So it's nice and easy to keep this seamless because everything pushes up towards each other. It's worth doing that grid of squares and it's not hard, right? Once you do it once or twice, it gets to be really, really easy, but it ensures that there aren't any gaps when we're cutting this. And it also ensures that um, there's no overlays. And the last thing is because the pieces all meet up like this, we get a really good tape of 
of piecing it together, then you're not going to notice the seams because the paper is going to be right up next to each other and it's easier for us to tape it together and make sure that the seams aren't showing. So, all right, when you piece it together like this, I always have to do it like this. Then you want to flip it over because you want to tape from behind because the face, we won't see any seams, right? Because look, there's a seam running right down the middle of his eyes and his mouth, but you won't see that because we have that black piece in between, right? So that's gonna hide all our seams. So the only seams you're gonna see are at the edges instead of seeing the whole thing running down. So that's why I do that. All right, let's move this aside. We're gonna flip this over, right? Because we're gonna tape from behind because we don't want any of our scotch tape to show through. So I had a little bit of an issue cutting right here. You can see it kinda, I didn't think it was gonna um, impact our project, so I just kept it and I didn't recut it. Okay, so what you wanna do is you always want to do two pieces at a time. And see, these two pieces come up perfectly to each other, right? So you wanna get your tape. I just used regular, oh, oh geez. My scotch tape popped up. <laughs> okay, so you, I just used regular scotch tape. You wanna push one hand, you wanna pull it up and push against the other piece and then kind of hold it down and then tape it. I took a huge piece because my, my scotch tape uh, malfunctioned on me. So I'm just gonna fold this because I don't want it going all the way to the edge. But um, what we're gonna do afterwards though is go the other way and tape it to make sure that th these this little piece right here, if we get it to be taped down, it's never gonna be flat, like it's not gonna show or or catch light because we've taped it down so well. So you wanna tape the edges really well. Right now, we just wanna get the pieces together, so we're not taping the edges just yet. So these two pieces, we're gonna tape these two. We're gonna push this up a little bit. Just, you know, get it so that you can tape it down. Then I'm gonna flip it over. <clears throat> then what you wanna do is you wanna, well, I'm gonna tape this one a little bit better. Then these two pieces, right, you want to tape that together. But look how perfect. It's just so easy to push it up against each other. Everything lines up. I mean, that's why I like doing the grid. I really do. Okay. So let's get these two. <clears throat> and once you get it down, then we'll go to the edges. And you'll see it really does make a difference. Okay, so... I'm gonna do this top edge right here. So it's already, I mean, there's nothing that we need to do at this point with like squeezing it together and pushing it up, but you just wanna make sure you go to the edge and get that. And so see, there's just a little piece. I couldn't go, I don't wanna go all the way to the edge because I don't want my tape to show. But as far as I can, I'm gonna go up there. So it's just like this much that's left and that's going to really help us um, minimize those seams. Okay, I'm gonna do the same down here. Okay, and this arm, of course, we need to do. So with the arm, it's not that long, but I wanna do this, you know, I wanna get the edges because you know there's gonna be a piece, a green piece coming right here. So I'm not as worried as from the middle part, but the edges, of course. Okay, so this one I'm gonna cut a little bit smaller. Okay, there, so that piece is really down. Let's get this edge right here. Okay, so that's gonna look really good. We've got that. Okay, just one more arm left. So this back is going to be glued to a foam board. So we don't care what the back looks like. It's gonna go on one big piece of foam board. Okay, so this is this is it. It doesn't look good, right? It's just kind of messy, whatever. But it doesn't matter because we're gonna flip him over and here he is. And you see he's all connected. He's one nice piece. There's nothing flapping, moving because we taped it down really well. Okay, so here he is. 
right? I mean, look at that big seam that is now totally covered, right? Okay, so let's put him together. I don't like to tape down as I go along because I find that I'm always making adjustments. So, <clears throat> you, oops, no. <laughs> Thought it looked funny. Okay. I mean, he's very simple and cute. Like it. <laughs> And because there's like a nice um, even oval of black going around, you just want to make sure that you keep your green outside of that piece. It's, it's, this is not hard to put together because it's a more simple piece. So it's, it's nice sometimes to have an easy piece to put together. Okay. And this is it. So once we like everything, and everything is in glitter, the green, the you know, his toes, his teeth, the horns. I mean, he's just gonna be really, really cute for pictures. Okay, so this looks pretty good to me. I'm looking in the camera just to make sure. It looks great. So I'm gonna take this apart because I don't think we need these anymore. Okay. Um, all right, so let's start taping it down. It's not that much taping. I'm just going to use my little circles here for the horns. And then once we have this down, um, right now is probably a good time to start heating up your glue gun. And I'm going to grab mine in a second. I just realized I pulled out my small one when I like to use the big one for this. So you see that it's down on the paper, but it's not down yet. I can still move this around a little bit. And after I do the horns, I'm gonna grab my glue gun real quick. So I do have two glue, whoa. I do have two glue guns. I have this small one that I use for smaller projects. The big one I use for the foam because we're putting down a lot of glue and so it's a lot easier to have a big one and I'll show you what that looks like. It's the one where you use the gigantic glue sticks. <laughs> It's this one, I mean, look at the glue stick as compared to this glue stick, right? So, all right, I'm gonna move this out. Give me just one second to plug it in. Okay, so I'm turning it on. Got my glue gun, that's on the side. All right, let's finish taping him up. Um, so let's do the arms. That's why you should put down scratch paper. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> now I'm actually gonna put together one, cause if you followed along in design space, that tutorial, um, it shows you how to break this down and actually get your Cricut to cut it, right? Um, you'll notice that this, I, I messed with the image. The image had the arms connected and the legs, but with it being all green, I liked making it a deliberate cut. This still, to me, looks just like the character in the movie. Um, so I personally think this is the better route, but I also, I'm gonna do another version offline and I'm gonna piece it together using all the same colors, using the same everything, but I left the arms connected. So you'll see what that looks like. This is my version. If I were to have a party right now with Monsters Inc., this is how I would do it. 
So, all right, <laughs> just wanted to tell you. So if you follow me on Instagram, that's where you're gonna see all the pictures. So it's instagram.com slash the useless crafter. Okay, this one I'm gonna need scratch paper because I'm gonna get it all over my board. Do this one and we're almost almost done I'm gonna grab my foam board and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to cut it so I'm pushing this back with my fingers this is the the tape it went a little bit over the edge so I want to clean it up before you put it down it's much easier to do it before you put it down because then you need to kind of like use a scraper and push it in all right, so that's in. Let's look to see how we want to do the for the toes or the toenails. I just want it to run along this line, so it's going to have that space in between. He's so cute, huh? Okay. Um, one last one, and then we're going to start doing the foam board. There he is. He looks great, right? And see right next to... Oh! Oh, we didn't do the face. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's put down the face. The face is super easy. We'll just turn it around. That was too funny. I'm like, what just happened? All right. We're going to do big strips on him on the face because we can. All right. Here we go. I completely forgot about his face. That's too funny. But you can see, I'm going to do it again, <laughs> making sure that it's down this time. But I'll put it next to me so that you can see, even in the little space, the colors. I mean, it's just, these characters are great party pop props because um, they look great in pictures. They shine really, really bright, um, and they look exactly like they're supposed to, right? As opposed to, I don't know, sometimes... I've seen cakes or drawings and it's, you know, it's more of an interpretation of the character than an actual good representation of the character. If you're using these strips, sometimes what I like to do is I like to take this little tool and brush it down before I do it. And I should have been doing this. Now almost everything will be down. <laughs> okay, so he's super sticky. So you just want to make sure you line him up before you really push down. Okay. Now let's test it out. <laughs> so see, I mean, he's great. He'll be there. He looks really good. I mean, gosh, he's adorable. Okay, let's do this now. I'm going to grab the film board and it's going to be really, really easy. <clears throat> So I get my foam board from the Dollar Tree. So it's a dollar, it's awesome. What you wanna do is you wanna put the character down and you do want a, where am I? A white pencil mark, cause it's, I mean a white pencil, a white crayon. I don't know what this says. <laughs> um, so that you can see it. All right, so you wanna make sure he's covered. Now there's a couple of things about this character. He has an open space right here. 
Usually I don't like to cut those areas because I feel like if it's not perfect, it's actually more distracting than it is to have it closed up right there. So we'll do it both ways. I'm going to, um, or I'm not gonna do it both ways. I'm gonna start out by not cutting it, and then if it looks bad, then we'll cut it. So, all right, the edges. I like these to just be at the edge and not have to cut that. So let's line him up at the edge, scoot him over a little bit. Sorry, let me make sure that you can see. This elbow is just slightly off, but it doesn't matter. What you're trying to do is you wanna support him so that he can stand propped up against the table. It's okay that not all the pieces, like his elbow right now, it's like this much that's off, that's not on a board, it doesn't matter. So now what you wanna do is you want to trace the outline because we're not, we're gonna cut inside the outline. So it doesn't matter that you can see this white. And the reason why we're cutting inside the line is because you don't wanna see it. Um, and you don't need, in order to support this, we don't need it to be supported 100%. We just need, oh shoot, <laughs> get an eraser. That, that comes out really easily. Um, yeah, we only need to support it like, even if we supported this 75%, Oh my gosh, I, you know what I need? I need breakfast this morning. <laughs> okay, I'm not functioning right now. Okay. I mean, this is gonna be well more than 75% supported. I mean, he's basically 90% supported, but <clears throat> I'm gonna put him aside. I like to use <clears throat> the Cricut True Knife Blade. <clears throat> I am slowly malfunctioning right now. Okay, you have another choice. There is a gap between his legs right here. This one's easy to cut, so I'm, I'm just gonna cut it. But you'll see what you wanna do at this point is, you can see the outline here. You wanna cut inside the lines. So, and you want straight cuts, like one continuous stroke. When that stroke ends, just pick up your knife and then start a new stroke. So I'm gonna go right here, I'm going inside. So see, that's it. So I'm gonna do the same here. And I think it's time for me to actually <clears throat> change out my blade, which I haven't done. I mean, it still cuts really well. You can see it here. It's smooth, but um, I think it's been a while. Now, you can support the ears by going up here and going around, or you can continue going around. This little piece right here is not gonna make or break your piece. Um, the ears are pretty substantial. They're, they're not tiny, right? So it's okay there. Um, I'm going to do one ear so you can see what I'm doing. And then on this other ear, I'm gonna go straight through. Yeah, see my board didn't cut all the way through somewhere. Okay, here. Now, I've torn this off before, and it was still okay for my board, but I don't want, I would recommend not ripping this off. You can rip off the black and leave the white foam board behind, but, and I'll, I'll tear off a piece right here so you can see what that looks like. but it takes away from the support just a little bit. And over time, so see, you could rip off this whole thing and it'll be a nice white, but over time, it will um, give you less support. And it's not a big deal, it just depends on what this 
what the goal is, right? If it's gonna, it's definitely gonna make it through a party. And then if you're going to just put it up on a wall, like actually mount it onto a wall, then it doesn't matter. But if you plan on just keeping it out on the bedroom floor or something, you're gonna want that support. Okay, so <laughs> let's continue this. I definitely need to change my blade. <laughs> it doesn't, it shouldn't be that difficult. Although I would say that's not that difficult, um, but I'm used to it being just kind of flawless. So, okay. to make sure we like it and that we don't need to make any more adjustments. And I'm gonna flip him around so that you can see what that looks like. Okay, so that looks really good. And see, I feel like this is not a big deal. All right, let me flip him over so you can see how he lays. So you see, I didn't support this ear. I supported this ear, but here, so let's flip this around so you can see that. So you can see, Okay, so this is the ear that's not supported, but you can see it's attached to the rest of it. it it's, it's not a big deal. So this was not that big of an, you know, big deal because it's only two little ears. But if he had like 20 of them where you needed to cut like this, I would just cut all the way around. All right, so what you need to do at this point is I like to do this. I like to tape him from the bottom at first. So we're gonna glue, or not tape, glue, glue him down. So we're gonna lift this up and glue down the foot. Okay, yeah, that's hot. Then, sort of like you do in yoga or any exercise class, we're gonna lift this up. He's already taped at the bottom. We're gonna start, put our gluing, I apologize. We're gonna start putting down the glue, little by little, so that we ease him down, and so that every part of him is going to be supported, um, but without bending this piece. Um, we're, so we're just gonna go little by little. What you don't want is, you don't wanna glue down some of this and then over here, because the glue's gonna dry, and you're not gonna be able to get to here. So that's why we're systematically going up. So, okay, start with the legs. always do this so when there is an edge right here or when there's an opening you got to make sure you don't put glue there so now I feel like I need to cut out that piece which is so annoying I didn't want to do that <laughs> all right I'm gonna try to get the glue out okay it happens to the best of us all right, so now I'm, I have to cut out both sides. So, <laughs> all right, so let's try to cut this out. 
I hate this. Okay. I'm going to give myself, I'm going to cut through and then I'm going to flip him over. Just when I thought this was going to be easy, but it happens. And if you wanted to cut it, then you can. So here we go. I'm going to cut this side. This side's going to be a little bit more difficult because there's glue right there. So I'm going to try my best to cut through. I'm so annoyed at myself. I always, always, always do that. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over and see. Okay, so um, the mark came through over here, so I know where to cut. So you can see it ripped a little bit there. That's okay. All right, this side's gonna be a little bit more difficult because it has the glue. So see, then you gotta clean this up because you can see the white a little bit. So I'm gonna flip this back over. And you wanna cut this, but you don't wanna cut your paper. So now we're kind of like slowly popping things out. Okay, here we go. But like I said, you gotta be careful because you don't wanna pop the paper. Okay, that looks a lot better. And then you could just take your fingers and kind of rip off the foam a little bit. Okay, so this side looks good, right? This side, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna push this down a little bit. And I'm hoping to kind of just rip this off because there's glue right there. I don't know where I'm gonna cut just yet, but so far it's feeling good. So this is not gonna look good from the back <clears throat> because our smooth cuts are gonna come through now. Okay, so this actually did not look that bad. Okay. Oh, wait, there. <laughs> All right, so can you see it? It actually doesn't look bad. We cleaned it up pretty well, but let me show you the back. The back doesn't look good, right? Because I had to punch, <clears throat> punch through. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit more offline, but you see what you can do. I would have preferred to have that hole in there, but Maybe you didn't like it to begin with, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining. Let me know. Oh no, that's, okay there. Yay. Um, he looks awesome, right? And he'll look great at a birthday party, um, a bunch of kids around him. So anyway, let me know what you think and I will see you next time. Bye guys.